welcome to Face the Facts. Great to have everybody here once again. I am Nick Face. Thanks for joining us virtually again for another fun edition of Face the Facts. Um, today we have Phil Healy with, it looks like Jalen Brown in the background, and we have Tom Smith get, uh, representing the Bruins gear today on this program. How's everybody doing? Hanging in there. Outstanding. They are so good that they are speechless in their oh, I can't find the words in their thoughts on how they are doing. So oh, I mean I said okay, but <laughs> hey it's that's fine. That's not fine. Okay, so that's totally cool. I know I am frozen. It is frigid out. Probably the coldest it's been in a very long time. It so is very cold. And windy. We have a lot of uh, energy here that we need to uh, get going with, with all of our fun conversations regarding uh, the NFL. We're going to talk about the Celtics and the NBA. We will talk about the Bruins, who are surging right now. And uh, we'll talk about uh, Kurt Schilling's uh, interesting little take here on not getting elected into the Hall of Fame. I was actually shocked to get that announcement earlier this week. And we'll talk about it a little bit here on today's show. Um, the first thing I want to get to is I want to go over the NFL, of course. We had our championship weekend this past weekend, and we had uh, our two teams, which was the Chiefs and the Bills, or our two, um, uh, the, the NFC and the AFC going about, going, going, uh, going about it. And uh, the Chiefs and the Bills, we had the Chiefs as our winner, and we had the Bucks as the winner against the Packers. So um, I want to talk first about the Chiefs and the Bills because I think all three of us are in the same agreement that we felt that the Chiefs were going to win that game uh, handedly. Am I correct? Well, I said, I said, don't be surprised if the Bills win, but I mean, you know, I think, I think it's going to be a different story for them next year. I think if they have the same team or somewhat of the same team there, they've got a good chance of making it to the big game next season for sure. Yeah, I think I think we're all picked the Chiefs, but I also thought uh, it was going to be a little closer, a little tighter. And I think I think Tom's right; they'll be back next year. And I think you know they've learned a little from this, and you know it's going to be a stinging loss. But you know what? I don't. Uh, I, I still think the Brown they shouldn't even been, have been there. The Browns blew it, you know, in the divisional round. Um, so what are you going to do? They had them. I expected kind of exactly what happened for the Bills. They're just, they weren't, they're just not ready to be a Super Bowl caliber team. That's not to say they're not good, but Josh Allen is not going to be Patrick Mahomes. It's just, it's not going to happen. Not with all the players that surround the Chiefs and everything. So I, I wasn't surprised at all from the game. I thought it was a very kind of vanilla kind of feel to it. It was, oh, okay, I expected this. You know, it, it is what it is kind of thing. So now we have the Chiefs going to the Super Bowl, and then that'll turn the page over now to the Bucs and the Packers. I think we all are in the same agreement here, and we all are talking about what the heck the Packers did on that fourth and goal opportunity where they kicked it versus going for it. I know Tom and I have talked casually in the past week about it. How does that happen? They pulled to the Seattle. Was it's Pete terrible. Carroll on the field? <laughs> how is that coach LaFleur or whatever his name is? It's Matt LaFleur, LaFleur right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does he come back? I mean, he's been there two times in a row, but That's I mean. It was horrible. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It also, you know, give credit to uh, Rogers and Eptitude. Give credit to that because he at least had two. I mean, I counted two. There could have been three instances where he could have literally. It seemed like walk into the end zone and he did. Yeah. And it just kind of like earlier in the game and later on. But, yeah, kicking a field goal, yeah, I guess I get it. But, I mean, even if you don't make it there, you know, Brady and the gang, are, are they're pinned down over there. And you got your defense has to do something. they got to stop them at one point. You know what I, I mean? Was, I was flabbergasted. Well, it, you it, will allow Tom Brady to come back on the field to go to a Super Bowl. What the? What is wrong with you? That's that's the thing. It, 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 you don't have Tom Brady on your field if you are on your team. If you have Tom Brady on your team, sure, fourth and three, kick the field goal because you know at least you get the ball. You're going to get the ball. But you're most likely going to get the ball back, and you'd have the best quarterback on your team to have a game-winning drive. Um, but we, you, he, but so I mean the way the the way the Bucks were playing in the second half. 
the Packers could have easily gone in first down there. So just plain and simple, I mean, it was a great first half from the Bucks. Second half was not spectacular at all. I don't know how much blame you throw at Brady for the three interceptions that he had. I do think that Mike Evans had an awful game. Awful. And he, he single-handedly could have choked away that opportunity to go to the Super Bowl. He had butterfingers all day. He was out of position. He was not getting the job done. And that's kind of how he's been a little bit in the clutch moment. He's more, he's a very skilled receiver. I'm not taking that away from him. But when it comes to getting the job done and getting a win and getting to the next stage, I can't count on him. And I think Brady probably has that in the back of his mind now is if we're in the Super Bowl, I probably can't look for Mike Evans and rely upon him as much as I want to. You saw Chris uh, Godwin basically get most of the attention with it, with getting uh, more passes thrown to him. I think he had more faith in him. You know, you also have Antonio Brown who was out. So that was another weapon that was taken away from Brady. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see more of Scotty Miller come to the MVP of that game. MVP of that game. Yeah, sure. but also, I mean, Evans. I don't know why he's not he using a couple him, catches. No, it is what it is. Yeah, but he had a couple Goodwin, catches, but yeah. two of the two of the interceptions were because he couldn't catch the ball. Uh, well, the one Brady kind of threw it. He threw it too high on that one in the uh, in uh, in between I, the I can, I can I, I, I would agree. I said it wasn't in the right spot. So yeah, yes, I, you can. It wasn't perfect. Yeah, I, I think I'm with perfect. you. Yeah. It wasn't perfect, well, Brady, but Brady wasn't no. making Brady wasn't making some great throws in the second half. No, he really wasn't. Um, he he was th- just hucking bucks uh, balls up in the air, just you know, being like, "I, all right, well, someone's gonna catch it, I'm sure." A little bit. He was 2019 Brady with the Patriots. That's what it reminded yeah. me of. Yeah. The but frustrated also, Brady was like, "Ah, throw this. I'm just gonna throw it up and hope for a miracle." That's what it reminded me of a bit. Uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of those he could have just kind of thrown. Maybe he could have thrown away. And some of them were on third down when, like, it was a play that was kind of dead. Not dead, well, the, but the one that he the anywhere. one that he threw up at the like side just threw up and was yeah. on the sideline. <laughs> it was a glorified punt, I guess. But yeah, uh, no, but it was a weird. Uh, the one there are a couple to Goodwin. I remember one to Goodwin. I forget if it was in the first or second half that literally went right off his chest. Yeah. And Goodwin's pretty good, and he made a couple great uh, catches yeah. like in that game for sure. But I mean, I think everyone's got to be. You never. I don't know. I I don't. Who is your who is your Julian Edelman on that team? On the Bucks, probably it you know needs I mean? to be Scotty Miller. Scotty, yeah. But, oh, but the rookie, their rookie, I forget their rookie name. receiver, and I'm sorry, I keep forgetting his name. He's been I do pretty too. solid. He's, He's been made pretty some great good catches here in the playoffs and everything. Yeah. Um, the other player that has gone under the radar, he really shouldn't go under the radar. Oh, Fournette. I thought he had a tremendous game with Leonard Fournette. Yeah, Leonard Fournette had some really solid runs. Well, his touchdown, his touchdown run was an absolutely incredible. He looks very healthy. He looks very motivated, and he looks like a player that the Bucks really gambled on. Well, that's a that was a risk worth taking, and that has worked out really well for them. So, good job on that end. Um, yeah, why did uh, why did Jacksonville give up on him? That's the thing I don't. Was it just like a toxic environment on the head? That's Jacksonville. That's why. Like, well, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's I think bizarre. he was starting to give up over there. Yeah. Yeah, I can I could see that. I think that they got to a certain stage and like, well, we have to blow it up now because we're not going to get back to the same level that we were. So that was a good move that was done there from from the Bucks. I give them a lot of credit with that signing there. Um, Gronk was pretty invisible, I will say though. He's been pretty invisible this year. He only really had one target. I mean, he's there because Brady's there. We, we get it. We yeah. understand it. But I also think that knowing that Mike Evans and some of the other guys on the offense might not be as trusting maybe within Brady to get that Super Bowl, don't be shocked to see Gronkowski have a Super Bowl. Well, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but you know Gronk Gronk looked pretty quick on the field on that one catch that he had. Yes, he did. Oh, he did the screen. Yeah, yeah. He looked. Oh, no, he looked like. 
Well, well I don't know if it was, was a it? screen, but, no, it wasn't but screen. I mean, he looked he looked pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he looked pretty good, and he's back to blo- I mean, they have him in the block almost a good percentage of the time. He's so I mean, even so yeah, even beyond an underrated one one of those underrated things that happens within your offense. He's doing a heck of a job on that end. If I were the box, I would be looking somehow to be able to get Gronk the ball when the Super Bowl, you know, is going on. Because I think that, that that'll make the biggest difference in the in the long run there, because you're gonna need everything that you can get to beat the Chiefs. This is gonna be a challenge for the box. If we're rooting for the box, if you're a fan and you want to see Brady win and you know the box win there for uh first Super Bowl since two thousand two, it's gonna take everything to be uh, to beat the Chiefs, I think the Chiefs have the edge right now. Well, they, that, that, I mean, the Buccaneers. De- I mean, I thought the Buccaneers defense actually played a lot better than expected against the Packers, but it's going to be definitely, it's definitely going to be a challenge for them in the uh, against the Chiefs. I don't think the offense is going to have too much of a trouble, but it all depends on what the defense does. Phil, what do you think? Yeah, I'm kind of with that too. I, I think it might be a I don't know if it'll be a shootout, but I think it might be, you might be looking at like a 24, 21 kind of thing going on. And maybe, you know, maybe it does turn into a shootout, but I think, you know, and I think you're right. Maybe Gronk gets more involved and maybe they bring Antonio Brown in. Who knows what happens to that? Maybe um, he comes back healthy. He's going to get two weeks. I would be shocked if Antonio Brown is running again. Was he a healthy sc- Was he like, no, uh, he's, not, he's, he's uh, hurt. Uh, or something. Oh, okay. Something with the, I think it was a hamstring is, issue. Oh wow! So yeah, that that'd be scary. They just, need to get yeah. him, yeah, in that system. Doesn't take I mean, a lot Brady, to have Brady, him Brady knows the Kansas City offense pretty well. I mean, he's played them enough to understand like what. So I mean, they do have a slight. They do have an edge as well. So who knows? Um, I'm just gonna go out here on a limb, and I do think Tampa will prevail. It's going to be a nail biter, though, um, to get, to get that Super Bowl. My, my prediction, my choice may change in the next week, but I'm still leaning towards Tampa. You can't doubt Brady, especially now. I mean, he looks super motivated to get another ring. It's going to feel weird that he doesn't have it, that he gets his ring, not being a Patriot and all. But I still, I got to root for him. Yeah. I got to root for him. I don't know. What yeah, I'm is. with you. I no, I. If you're not, if you're one of these weirdos who. Uh, doesn't like that they left the Patriots. It's like then you have no gratitude in your bones. You so, you're not a Patriots fan if you don't root against if you don't root against the Chiefs. <laughs> well, that's another thing too. That's that's the other you thing that's can. kind of piling on. You can't. Well, we know the Super Bowl is upcoming, but we also know the off season is here for the Patriots. And I, Tom and I again talked off air, and we had an article that was that was circulating this week about. What's going to happen with the Patriots and what, what do things look like and all? So I think we're in all pretty much agreement here that they are going to be moving on from Cam Newton. So the question is, what? 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 <laughs> oh, I forgot. You're a part of Cam Newton. Rah, rah, I'm, the, I'm a Newtonian, yeah. <laughs> rah, rah, Cam Newton. Woo! He's I mean, I don't. Yeah, I mean, um, they should. Why wouldn't they move on? Hopefully they so move the question, on. The question is going to be, what do the Patriots do? They're going to have a lot of money um, that's going to get freed up from the cap. you got your quarterback spot that you need to fill. You also need to think about your wide receiver spot. you got to think hard about Julian Edelman. Is he going, going to come back? Are you going to trade him? doesn't look like to me Edelman wants to be a Patriot. He wants to be with Tommy. So if they want to send him out, whatever. You know, he's already going to be 35 years old. So maybe you do move on from that. And he's a pain of glass, too. The question will be, what do you do under center? So I think we all have some different choices here. Um, Phil, if you were um, to be the GM, the Belichick of the Patriots, who is your quarterback for 2021-2022? Let's get Aaron Rodgers in here. Okay. Let's, let's make it a competition. Let Bill I, Belichick I, be like, hey, I, you know I, what? I was shaking his head. Crazy. Oh, no, no. Wait. Let Bill Belichick go, all right, Tommy, you want to yeah. you wanna go? Let's get something Let's get something brewing. Because I'm yeah. sure Belichick is, ste- is stewing. And if they could work something out, I mean, maybe he won't. I, I Probably not going to leave the Packers because it's probably just a play for more, for more pay. Are you sure about that, though? I'm not. I'm not, but – 
I mean, I it would be a lot long... right now. I think he's ready. Yeah, I think I he's mean, ready. He might be. He might be. I mean, I mean, you look at what happened in the off season before this season started. They 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 screwed they screwed him over, and he decided. They already to stay drafted anywhere. a quarterback. Oh, you mean? A oh, they did. The yeah. First round. So they he's did. kicked. He's kicked. And then, they, him, and then they lose that. I and then, look I'm sure he's. Yeah. I'm sure he was thinking, oh, we should go for it on fourth and three. But you know, the coach was like, nope, we're going to kick it. Probably pissed. You know, he's yeah. probably pissed about that. And then his cryptic messages that he left in the front uh, press conference after the game, too, after the championship game. But he's been talking so, since after that. But it's still, you know, it's all. He's still he's crazy. he's done it. He's done in Green Bay. He's done in Green Bay. But yeah. I, I also don't trust- think that after what we just saw with Brady going to the box. I mean, that was the biggest shock to a lot of people. If Brady can lead the Patriots after 20 years, so can Aaron Rodgers. I think but Rodgers I, has – I think Rodgers is thinking very hard about what his next uh, spot will be. I do think he plays next year. I don't see it in Green Bay. Nope. No. I don't, tr- I don't trust him on the Patriots. I don't trust him in the Patriots jersey either. You want to hear a shocker? You don't trust him. I don't even think – I don't even think it's the Patriots that do this. I think Aaron Rodgers actually will end up being a Dallas Cowboy. Whoa. Yep. That's a, what well, what about Dak Prescott? Do you think he uh, what, Dak not? Dak will go to another team? Yep. Yep. Wow. Uh yeah, that could be. I mean, that's like well, who's the I mean, the other rival for Green Bay at Chicago Jones technically. So hard after Rodgers cuz they missed out on Brady. He was yeah. going after him. He wanted Brady. Oh, what? Uh Yep. For Dallas? Really? Dallas wanted Brady. Yep. Dallas I know that. Brady. So I wouldn't be shocked to see that happen at all. So Rogers is your pick. Tom, who is your choice for the Patriots? I got to stick with Jimmy G. Okay. I mean, it's just the obvious choice. He already knows that he already knows the bulk of the playbook. And if it's changed, it can't be that too many major changes. Do you trust that he will stay healthy? I think the, I think, I think he could. I think he's got enough experience in the league now to, you know, see see the defense coming. The the O line is actually, you know, pretty good at protecting the quarterback now. Um, it has been for the past couple of years. So I think I think he's got a good chance to play all sixteen games or eighteen games, whatever they decide to do next season. I hate when we like all agree on the same thing, but I I have to agree with with one of these moves. As much as I think Rodgers is the better quarterback, you know, that could come into the Patriots and maybe Belichick is able to uh, figure things out and get him a championship. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I'm just thinking realistic here on what, what I feel is most likely going to happen. I have to agree with Tom. I think that Belichick absolutely loves Garoppolo and he's going to do everything he can to trade or, and get Garoppolo back to being a Patriot. I think San Francisco is done with him. I think San Francisco is going to be working hard to bring Matthew Stafford in over there. Stafford's name is coming up or Deshaun Watson, either those two, those two names right there. Well, that's, I think, but I think that's, I, mean, I think that's, that's another great name after you, for the you, look, you look at, you look at the, op, you look at the options available out there, come on the off season. And there really aren't too many that would, you know, fit well in the Belichick offense, especially well, after ne- what happened. Know. Well, look, well, look what happened with Cam Newton. I, but I also think, think the Patriots want to go back on that front. But I don't think – I think that's a weird – I think Cam Newton is kind of like that thing where it's like he was kind of done in a lot of ways. And I don't know. I don't think uh, he can I don't really think Belichick throw the ball. Liked that, I don't think Belichick liked that kind of offense. I think he thought – well, What, do you, what kind of offense do you mean? The, the running – the mobile quarterback. I, I think that works in congruence with if you can actually throw the ball. I think that's well, kind of like, and that's the problem. There aren't that there aren't any mobile quarterbacks available in the off season that can throw the ball that that are also mobile. Well, I guess yeah. I mean, I would say Aaron Rodgers is a little bit. I mean, in his earlier days, it's a lot better. Stafford in his earlier days, sure. Um, but I'm talking like Deshaun mobile, Watson. Mobile. I'm talking like a running court, a quarterback yeah. that can you know run like a running. Yeah, back. I know what you mean. I I think would, a run would first. Would not entertain Deshaun Watson here. No, no, we should. We should. We should. No. Okay, Phil. Tom, I think you should. What do you like about him? I'm Tom shaking his head. No. Uh, he's had it. He's had a. He's had an MVP year. Yeah. Uh, B. He seems to get better and better every year. 
uh, and see, it just seems like it might not, he probably won't care to come here because I mean, he's already been kind of, he's been under Bill O'Brien and Casario's over there. So he might not want anything to do with any Belichickian kind of deal. And he also might just want to go to uh, San Francisco or something like that. But uh, I think he's just, I think he's just a great quarterback and I think he's making his way there. And I also think he's not, as much as you hear him complaining now, I think he's actually a pretty good soldier in that regard where he will kind of do what he needs to do. And if it, if they win, they win. I think like if you win and I think Aaron Rodgers would be this way too, or Deshaun Watson, even to bring like a Stafford, maybe they would fall in line because they win. I mean, that's kind of how maybe it's a delusion of, on my part, but I think there's a degree of truth to it. And oh, also my, right, well, hey. my hot take today uh, before, before I do my hot take, Tom, your opinion on yeah. Deshaun Watson. My, my, my argument with you, Phil, is Cam Newton also had an MVP year. He also got better and better as he – But he – no, the last – no, the la- he had an MVP year in 2016. What game were you watching? <laughs> yeah, no, he had, no, he had an MVP I'm year in 2016. Season, yeah, but I mean, I'm talking about right now. Like, if you're going to take what's happening right now and Deshaun Watson doesn't have the injury history that Cam Newton did, Cam Newton went cheap for a reason. He right. had only played at, at like four or five games, I think, the season before – and he was ousted by – even when he was healthy, he was ousted by another quarterback they had. And Carolina didn't want to deal with him anymore. I just, Not because he was a bad guy. Just he wasn't, he wasn't the same guy he was. And I don't think I don't Deshaun trust, Watson I don't was trust, in his prime. I, I agree that Watson is a good player. I just don't trust his arm. He's, he's, he's – I mean, I, I see him and Jameis Winston as almost, almost one and the same. And I don't know about except, that. Except Watson – I would say Watson's a little better. I think Watson is a lot better. I I don't know, uh, but that's another thing. Hey, we could grab but, Jameis Winston. But I wouldn't. I would. I'd rather. I'd take Watson over Winston. But I don't. I just don't see Watson having any luck coming here with the uh, with the receiving core we have right now. You mean just like the lack of the lack uh, of receivers? Depth? I mean, if yeah. Edelman was you know eight years younger, and yeah. we had a decent you know uh, longer, deeper threat. I'd say, yeah, okay, maybe bring Watson over, but Edelman's yeah. thirty-five. Yeah. His knees, his knees are absolutely shot, and we just don't have any receivers that would be able to. I don't. I just unless don't see unless they sign somebody. I don't know who. No, I, I just, I, think I that, just don't. Yeah. I just don't see our receivers being able to fight off the cornerbacks or the safeties or the linebackers for a pass from Watson. No, I mean, I think that's a whole other issue. But yeah, I uh, I don't disagree with you there. As far would as I like, like not would having I like the, to see Watson here, court. absolutely. But for this season, no. Next, yeah, he, next season, no. So my prediction, my hot take is uh, Deshaun Watson goes to the 49ers. Jimmy Garoppolo comes to the Patriots. Aaron Rodgers goes to the Cowboys. And then Indianapolis gets Matthew Stafford. That's my hot take. Yeah, that's not. I could see Stafford going to Indy. Um, Question would be, where does Dak go? I don't know that yet. And where does Cam Newton go? Maybe Cam Newton doesn't find a team. That that's very very likely. That could very well likely happen. I mean, Dak could go to Houston to go as, as a backup. Dak could just go to Houston, not too far from his home. Yeah. And, uh, what did that? What did that? Bad, what did that be a dagger in the back right there if he went to Houston? Yep. Yeah. I mean, I would love to see him here too. I mean, he was doing pretty well. I mean, I'm open. I'm open to any quarterback who isn't Cam Newton right now. Let's just oh, you finally honest. say it now. Oh, okay. Nice. Oh no, I've been pretty vocal again about his crappiness. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, All right, yeah. uh, I do want to change over. We're going to go to um, basketball next, and um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, Bill, but what have the Celtics stepped in as Tom goes away <laughs> <laughs> to have a sandwich? I don't blame him. Um, I'll, be, I'll be doing the same during hockey. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what is going on with this team right now that's a good question uh defense and rotating players crazily uh but the what was it you well you didn't have tatum for a bit in the last that's time we talked yep, that's yeah you didn't have tatum for and a couple players uh for a part of it and this last game against san antonio that it was the other night on wednesday night was kind of a pickle because they were up by nine in the second and then the the they just kind of let it slip they just didn't really play that they didn't really play defense yep. and then they came back and they lost by four. So 
it, you know, it, they made it close, but it was one of those things where they have to be consistent on the defensive end sometimes. And sometimes they'll just let kind of what happened uh, in the Eastern conference championship last year, you just kind of, you have a lead in the fourth and you just let it slip away because you're not clamping down and everything starts on the defensive end. When you get stops, things open up. And, and if you get stops and are not hitting shots, at least you're, you know, stopping the bleeding and you're not allowing a team to gain. So that's kind of the thing that they got to work on right now. Uh, I, you know, that's kind of how it is. And also they'll probably get, you know, we'll see what they do trade wise, but that's how I see it. I think they need a trade of some sorts. I don't know what it is, but they got to figure out um, something. Um, it definitely seems that without Tatum, the wheels definitely fell off. So how do the wheels get back on and get back on track to get into a better rhythm of how you weren't really on? I guess that's the big question to look for. So hopefully health they stay okay with, they get more consistent time. There, there is, in my opinion, way too many minute restrictions on certain people. I think Brad Stevens likes to play his full team as much as possible. And I get it to preserve, you know, some of your, you, you know, your big time, your big time players like your Browns and your Tatums and your Kembas and all that. But I'm getting kind of fed up with seeing some of these guys just in for the sake of being in, you know, like, I'm sorry, taco ball. You you're tall, taco fall. Fall. Fall, whatever the hell he is. Um, um, you're tall. That's it. Like, I, I don't get the love of, of him. I'm sorry. Oh, he, I mean, I get it. Not, I get, I mean, but, sadly there's some sort of side sideshow uh, element to it, but I also think he's gotten quite, show. but he's also gotten quite better in a lot of ways, but he hasn't really played. He's only really played in like that game, Orlando game with a very short staff. Yeah. And uh, I don't think he's played that much since then, but he was actually pretty good then. Yeah. But yeah, no, they play a lot of people. Williams is the Grant Williams, the Rob Williams. Oh, I, Grant I, Williams. I, I would, like, I'll argue. I, I like, I, I'm, I'm okay with seeing a little bit more of him, but Grant Williams for what? Oh, no, I'm, I, I think you're wrong about that. I think Grant Williams is a great defender and you he's like actually a guy. That's okay. I think he's a defensive guy. And also he is actually, and in the playoff last year, because this is the second year as a rookie, he played beyond his years. And he's one of those guys who will, sh who's not crazily offensive minded, but he's a guy who can sit in the corner and you can toss it out to him and he will nail a three. And he's been pretty consistent about that since he's been on this team. Uh, I also, I, I like his side. He, he also, he's a bigger uh, Marcus smart in that regard. And he also plays, he plays intelligently. He plays pretty well. He knows that it seems like he knows the game. And he knows what he's doing out there. But, uh, yeah, I, I also think that's, you know, I'll keep saying this. I, I mean, they do. They need a veteran. Oh, sure. I don't know, I don't know who it is. I think it's great. But somebody's got to come in and be one of those leader example players or somebody who has a nice history of being in the second rotation, coming in, getting the job done, and training some of these guys that's, that, are, that are on the bench or something like that to – um, understand what it is to get to the championship kind of level of what this team I think has missed for at least the past few years. I think that missing piece or piece is would be what puts the Celtics over the top. I do. Yeah. I mean, I think you need some bodies in there that are, or even another starter possibly who could go in between yeah, bench that's and okay too. because you can I'm shift. Still worried. I'm still worried on Kemba. I must say I'm still concerned on the Kemba front. I may always be concerned on Kemba. No, I think that's, I mean, I think that's a, a healthy way to look at him. He's been playing pretty decent. He's been playing decently from what I've seen at him. And he still has that crazy shot that just almost falls out of the air yeah. and just kind of just right, you know, right through. Uh, I mean, Jalen Brown's been great. I've always thought he's been great. I've always thought he's been capable of this. I think Jalen Brown's their best player this season. He's doing great. And Tatum's kind of just toying with a lot of stuff. He's wait just let them play I, it's weird because it's it, to me it's still kind of early because it's only been like a month so and i think they're longer. huh it, it does it actually it does it yeah, does it but also keep in mind like for like a week and a half almost two weeks they they didn't really have a full team and they they all were kind of messed up from the covid stuff because you had like maybe five to eight play i forget how many players were just kind of out like, of yeah so five you know, six something like that so it was a good amount and it's 
you know, maybe it, this next week what we'll see is a little bit more of a consistency within the players on the team, getting back to basics, getting back to, you know, their track record of what they did at the beginning parts of the season and, and doing well. So that's yeah. my hope from that. Um, anything else in the rest of the NBA that w- w- uh, needs to be discussed or talked about? We did I know, did I, just come up on the one year anniversary of, of Kobe's of Kobe Bryant passing. Yeah. And uh, everyone in that uh, plane, which is, you know, it's one of those crazy tragedies. Um, you always remember I mean, who you were when you got that news. I, 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 I do. I do. Florida. I got back from Florida oh, all right. later that morning and I was, uh, I think I was at the gym at that point and I hmm. got a message from a bunch of people. Kobe just died. I'm like, what are you talking wow. about? Yeah. 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 I had just gotten back um, from Florida at that point. I was, it was a, one of the last times I was at my parents' place since, because I haven't been there since the pandemic. Yep. And uh, I remember being there and my, my brother-in-law and I were talking and we just got looked at our phone because we got a thing, a notification like, oh, Kobe Bryant, like Kobe Bryant died. Because uh, we both had an app that, you know, would, would tell us when Kobe Bryant would die specifically just for that. But uh, no, it was, it was crazy because we were like, oh, because, you know, he, of course, he's older than us or old, at least, you know, he's this guy who played a, had a pretty crazy career, but he also was pretty, I mean, he was in like, his, was it early 40s? 41. 41, yeah. yeah, he wasn't that old. And he also was like, it wasn't too far. It was like a couple of years removed from him retiring, maybe two years, I think, not even, I forget. But it was, uh, yeah, it just was one of those things, regardless one of, one of, of the most and, tragic, tragic tales of uh of a famous athlete yeah. um, passing away from just something so sad i i, I wasn't around yeah. thurman munson or anything but there's another one um who had passed away from uh, a crash in his plane same with roberto clemente um, yeah just to name well, a few on that on that end and so. it does it does seem the richest way to go to die in a plane crash and from his like palace to like um, to LA because they didn't want to take LA traffic. I never will go on one. I just don't. I don't trust. Well, them. I mean, but all these other people were with them too, and his daughter. The tragedy, yeah, the most tragic daughter. thing. Yeah, that's to me. That's one of the more crazy things. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we don't want to go all sad here no. on, on the sure. show. We need to return back to happiness. And I see the smile on Tom's face because. He's probably going to come at me very hot right now saying that I needed to back off on the Bruins, not to worry. It's all good. They're going to be fine. So give it to me. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, they're just, they're, they're playing a full team game, full, full, full game. I mean, I, I got to say, you know, in the past going into OT in the shootout, pretty nerve-wracking. It was very bad. bad. It was something yeah. that we didn't want. Uh, but now going into OT and the shootout, I'm pretty confident with the team. Uh, they they still haven't had a loss in regulation yet. Um, they definitely have a tough couple of games coming up though against the Capitals. Um, so don't don't expect don't expect too much from that. But who knows? I mean, the way they're playing right now, I mean, they they could really they don't have to go against Holtby anymore in Washington. So they might have an easier Just time. Tara. Uh, just Char, who scored his first goal the other night. Yes, he did. <laughs> um, as a capital, as a capital, I should say. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> <laughs> it just turns in my stomach. Everybody, all, all the guys playing long careers in Boston just want to leave, apparently. Um, but yeah, the defense is the defense is playing good. Uh, Tuca had a Tuca had a scary scary. Uh, Incident the scary other night Tuesday or, night or a scary Tuesday. Yeah. So he was fine. But he came back and he played. So that that was good to see. Um and Halak had a pretty good game. So the Bruins just got off two back to backs against the Pittsburgh Penguins. And I, I have just have to tell you on the Penguins front, I, I am not impressed with anything on that team. It's sad because they have two of the better, actually probably three of the better players in the NHL, a tang. Uh, Crosby and Malkin. I mean, those are anchors, big names in the NHL. I didn't see one damn thing that said, oh, my God, they're amazing. I mean, Malkin hit, had a shot that hit the crossbar that probably should have been a goal. Yep. Um, Crosby was pretty quiet. Yep. Um, Jason Zucker's Jason Zucker's another player that's good on that team. Um, and Latang just looked 
god awful on defense. I have to tell you that I think one of the most embarrassing things that's happened so far in the NHL was a three on zero opportunity where that was in overtime on Tuesday night and Malkin, Latang, and I think it was Crosby too, yeah. all missed yeah. the freaking net. It was hysterical. Well, I mean, if you watch the replay, Tuca made made a uh, great play with his stick and poked the yes, puck. Yes, he there, did. Put his stick in the path of the uh, pass and was able to block the pass, and they weren't able to score. But I mean, you got those three guys on the ice with a three on zero, and you can't they can't score. That was it was That's... hysterical. I laughed for days on that. I'm still laughing for days. On I, it, but I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, I was shocked. Sure. And then you go and you see. Um, I was watching the game with my dad. He, it's my dad, and um, it was it was uh, what's his name? The new guy that's there. The new guy on offense. He's on the second line. Oh, uh, Craig Smith. Craig Smith. Yeah, Craig Smith goes and scores, and he's he's like, oh, that guy sucks. <laughs> and then lo and behold, he puts the puck. He goes, oh yeah, that guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's what you were saying. That's what you've been saying for the past month. <laughs> I'm going to keep going with that. The Bruins are not good, folks. They're not. They're not going to get to where they want. No. The, the, more I, the more I spew my BS, the better the team does. So we'll continue that. We'll continue that. I will ask, though, who do you think has been the strongest player so far for the Bruins this season early on? Um, Maybe top three. Who would you go as number three? Kevin Miller. Yep, I'm very surprised on that front. Kevin Miller. They made a nice move so far on it. Who would um, you say number two? Number two, I would say David Krejci. Yeah, that's another good move. He was out last night um, due to uh, some sort of uh, – I don't think it's severe. I no. think they're just going to try and make sure that he stays as healthy as possible. And who's number one? Tuca. Yeah, I'm in the same agreement on, on Tuca. I actually uh, don't put Krejci into the number two spot. I'm going to put Marshan into it. I've been very happy with his production. Uh, that first line is still solidifying everything. And it's definitely because of Marshan, I think, a little bit more that that's why Bergeron is starting to click, you know, a little bit. Yeah, more. I, I mean, it, it's it's my number two. It's definitely between Krejci and Marshan. But, I mean, Krejci, the way, you know, in the past, Krejci has been down at the bottom of the barrel of the team for the most, for the most part. So, I mean, so to see him play like he was playing in the playoffs is, uh, is this the best second line they've had in a while? Absolutely. So you're getting real good production so far from obviously Krejci, your new addition with Smith. You also have, um, um, who else? Is on well, that line? Co Coyle played last night. Cause or, uh, the, yeah, Coyle was on it. Coyle is doing well. I will say. Yeah, Coyle's starting to have enough only because DeBrus DeBrusk was out, so Coyle yeah. they moved Coyle up. You had um, the Corrali line scored last night. Wagner was out there, good play, good setup from that from that group. You know when you, that line is scoring and everything, you're going to be doing well. So we want to see more of that from that line as well. Yeah. Um, so and there's, there's oh, go ahead before you. Do there's that. there's a chance that Pasternak could be playing soon too in the next couple yeah. games. So yeah, keep an eye out for that because that's going to be huge. That is going to be huge. Hopefully he's healthy and stays yeah. healthy and doesn't do stupid things. That's another thing that's important too. Um, the next thing I wanted to ask, so is this Saturday, is that Washington? Yep, Washington, and then they play Washington again on either Monday or Tuesday. Yep, we're going to look right now. We're going to cheat. So they play the Capitals. That will be uh, at 7 o'clock on Saturday night. Going backwards a little bit with the Celtics, they play the Lakers on Saturday night. That'll be interesting. No sports games on Friday evening. How about that? Looking mm -hmm. at uh, February 1st, the Bruins will play the Capitals on yeah. Monday um, at 7 o'clock. And the Lakers game, will, I think, will be pretty decent tomorrow night. It's prime, prime time, too. It's like 830. Yeah. So the Celtics are on that big West Coast trip right now. So mm – -hmm. They will play, just so everybody knows, too. They'll go Saturday night against the Lakers, then off until Tuesday night at 10 o'clock against Golden State. Yep. Then they will go uh, Wednesday night against the Kings. And then it looks like they – nope, they're still on the West Coast. Then they will play the Clippers on yeah. Friday night. And finally, 
Looks like the Suns will be on February 7th, and then it looks like I think they come home. Nope, oh, they go to <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, yeah, they're, Utah they're for a while. Jazz, that'll be the ninth. And then finally, they return home February 11th at the Garden against the Raptors. So they got a tough, tough, tough yeah. schedule right now. It's like uh, two weeks. I, yeah. I have to correct myself, too. I said the Bruins hadn't had a regulation loss yet, but they did end up losing to the Islanders in regulation on uh, the 18th of January. Yeah, so that's their one loss. Um, I thought they had lost in overtime to them, but I was wrong. Um, and, the, they, I mean, it's, it's a – it's a tight race in the standings right now. Um, Philly and Boston's in second, but the Flyers, because uh, Boston has one game at hand, but they had the same amount of points as the Flyers. Yep. And uh, the Capitals are undefeated and only have two more points than the Bruins. So if the Bruins win. So this is um, a big weekend here. This, this Saturday be, and Monday night is big. So if the Bruins win Saturday, they'd be they'd be considered first in the division because they have one game in hand. Very cool. The final thing I want to mention here on our show, this is going to be actually an hour-long edition today because we had so much to cover. Uh, I do want to talk about baseball because, yes, I know it's freezing out, but we're about two, uh, about a month from spring training mode and everything right there. And every January, we get the announcement for the Baseball Hall of Fame. And very disgusted, very uh, shameful that there are zero inductions going in for the 2021 class. It's wrong. I think it's very corrupt, just like our country is with politics right now. And Kurt Schilling was robbed once again. He is uh, not getting elected. He ended up having, I believe it was close to 72% of the votes. He yeah. was 12 votes away from going in. And people are taking this, the reporters that get the vote. It is personal driven and it is wrong. Uh, I mean, if you were, uh, there was a great quote regarding uh, why some people didn't vote for him. I think I have it right here. He was a dumb, dumb head. <laughs> but I mean, like that's, no, but I mean, truly, I mean, yeah, I, I, it's just like the Ty Cobb. I mean, there's so many crazies in, uh, uh, you know, they're in the Hall of Fame. And baseball. How do you justify, I guess my question is, how do you justify all those guys that have been put in from years past that didn't have the greatest character and all that? Yeah, Ty Cobb, Ty Cobb a well-known racist, yeah. Yep. Because the country was more racist then. Yeah. <laughs> because it was it was fundamentally more racist. Well, it's all, or, it's ex- all the people. accepting. It's all the people at ESPN that get the vote. Because yeah, I mean, those, I, those all those people that get it. It's it's the. But people don't you think are, it's wrong? Oh, I would but don't, open it up to the fans. Let the fans vote. Yeah, but that might not get the same. That might be more of the same. Uh, which I, I, don't, I don't listen. So. Well, as a baseball guy, he should his merit should get him in. We all know why I he isn't getting he in. Should. Well, whether you whether you agree with him or not. You also know, like, just shut shut the hell up for ten minutes and just like sit back for a year that's and don't say part anything. Part of Kurt problems is he has yeah, a big he, mouth. He just has to shut up. Very conservative, and he spews a bunch of things that I myself do not agree with. Mm. But that doesn't mean because I support him to go into the Hall of Fame that I sure. support him and what he stands for. Well, I support what I saw on the field. He gave he it all. No, he he got a championship, and that's it. And that's I'm sorry, right. and I'm sorry that's I wrote right. all those speeches for him. I'm sorry I wrote all those speeches for him, but he had to say it. Well, he, was, he had to get it like, up And it's not no, like he's going into the Hall of Fame for his reported for reporting skills or his commentating skills or his analytical skills. It's, it's but those weren't horrible. <laughs> they actually no, weren't that but bad. it's for what but it's for what, what he said when he was an analyst or whatever, you know, whatever you yeah, did yeah, with yeah. ESPN. And that's that's the reason why he's not going into the was he thing. no, but was he that bad? I thought it was just it was more his Twitter and everything else, I thought. Not necessarily he's the like, Donald Trump of sports. Let's just it put had, it out. But it but he's what, Donald what well, no, because he actually was successful in the field he, he chose to be in. Oh, so oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Well the bell on that well, we won't go any further oh. with that, but yeah. No, I mean, there the You're people fine. that get the vote aren't <laughs> weren't consi- putting his baseball career into consideration when they were voting. They were like Nick said, that's the the personal issue. feelings. No, I think I don't think you're wrong, but I also I, think uh, part of that is his fault too. 
I, I, I think I, I can't stand when somebody yeah. is trying to make a decision about a person's <laughs> Hall of Fame career. Yeah. That's their what they did on the field. It's not what they did off of the field or continue to do from that kind of stuff. So Kurt Pete Jones Rose. Is one of the best postseason yeah. pitchers that the game has ever seen. And for him to get robbed from that, it's a it's a mockery. And this, yeah, this I, is part of this is part of the reason why people don't want to watch baseball anymore. Yep. Well, I mean, I, one of the myriad of reasons why people don't watch it. But uh, yeah, I also, based on his baseball skills, yeah, of course, he's a, well, I, that's a good question because a lot of people, as you know, Nick and Tom, uh, Nick more so because you're the uh, baseball, I would say the baseball guy here that, uh, you know, Baseball Hall of Fame is the most finicky and they're the most classist cool. and weird about what they do. And I don't think that's, I actually don't think that is the most horrible thing. But, I mean, they're just going to not have as many inductees as we go. And I think Barry Bonds and Clemens should be in. I no agree. Doubt. It was a part of the game. I think we've had that conversation about the steroid era. Yeah. You can't reverse history. Whether we liked it or not, it happened. If Bud Seeley's in the Hall of Fame, as your yeah. commissioner of sports, is, is he, he really knew what was going on. Is he well, in the Hall of Fame? Clemens and Bonds not yeah. in it. No, I. But Bud Seeley is one in the, exception, but you don't make the other exception for the others. It, it's it's no, nope, yeah, and also go like C Clemens' career before, like whatever you want to make the demarcation of when he started using or whatever, like that career alone, I think would marry eighty four to ninety six gets him into the Hall of Fame. I would think so, and I think Barry Bonds, like his career before, you know, I, I guess his home run. Uh, Chase. His youth era, when he was yeah. a Pittsburgh Pirate, that was a Hall of Fame. That was even, Hall of Fame caliber. Yeah, or even the beginning the Giants, of the Giants. You know, with the McGuire and Sosa and all that era with the steroids and yeah. stuff, when he started taking them, well, I guess he hasn't come out and you know, said Yeah, yeah, yeah. Technically, he hasn't taken anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, just read the book. Yeah. Uh, no, what, there was a couple books, weren't there, that were pretty good on... Sorry, I didn't mean... Yeah, yeah there was... About the clear, right? What was yeah. it? It was the uh, cream. The clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clear, yeah. Everything. There was a really good... I, when I was little, I was fascinated by just getting more information about this. And I remember mm -hmm. there was only one player that I was hoping that never, ever... Actually, two players that I hope yeah. never, ever, ever took steroids. And that was Nomar. And that yeah. was back in back in the time. Um, there was another Red Sox. I can't think of his name. Not Pedro. Oh, Ortiz. Ortiz, yeah. That's still kind of vague in that in that area. Yeah. Uh, At least we know we've heard nothing about Pedro, you know, from any, <laughs> any of that stuff. But no. it was it was an accepted part of the game. It was to get baseball back to life and get ratings, <laughs> get people in the stands and everything. And yeah, it worked. It brought back an end, a, a dying era from '94 when they got locked out. The fans were not happy. They did not want to support Major League Baseball. Yeah. So this whole thing with juicing them up and making them hit home runs and everything, that's what brought baseball back. Well, so that's – oh, go ahead. Maybe Sorry. they need to go tell the players to juice up again because <laughs> well, the way it's going right now, it is not looking pretty for baseball. Well, I, th I think so, th they get smarter as they go, and that's what happened with the juice error. Like, it's not like they just were blindly doing something. They were doing something very calculated in a way where they understood how to get around – the testing system and it was it's actually pretty uh ingenious the way they were doing a bunch of stuff and it's very bizarre because i don't know the way you were saying it seemed like you were saying like the league was not forcing them but encouraging them to juice which is whatever i don't know yeah. i don't know if you've read something or if there's a, a theory a theory that the the league which makes sense if the league was like hey go you know these are the guidelines you can do this but you can't do that you know I don't know. Is that something you've come across? Or? There, there's all different sorts of conspiracy theories on whatever people want to justify, I guess. Well, I mean, I mean, what's there, a, there, the, there's nothing vanilla about this. There is way too many sides. There are way yeah. too many issues. There are way too many exceptions for one, but not exceptions for all. So it's unfortunate that this continues to halt, you know, to, to make baseball yeah. look awful. It looks awful. Well, just Not outdated. putting one person in again yeah. for a year. It's terrible. You can't. It, it's got to be better. It's got to be. I still don't understand how Clemens, I mean, he's kind of, eh, he's not as big of a jerk, but I can, 
I'm trying to figure. I mean, Bonds and Clemens. How do you not put those guys in? Isn't the, isn't right, Clemens so. done now? Isn't he out of out of Probably. chance of opportunities? Probably they're gonna have to go to the veterans committee or something. Oh yeah, that's right. Was it five years after? Or no, ten years. Maybe it's ten years. Schilling only has one year left. I know that. 100%. Wow. There's no way he gets in next year. Either, so next year you have uh, Ortiz on the ballot, I believe. Oh. A Rod. Um, <laughs> if A Rod gets in, then I will. And he's gonna get in. He, he should. In. And he you know should. why he's going to get in, Tom? And Phil, you know why he's going to get in? Because he's playing kiss ass with the rest of the media out there, playing all friendly. He's, yeah. He's Mr. Wonderful. Like, A no, Rod's at right, A Rod's right. a Rod's okay. at that. A Rod's at that. And the media now loves him. So, okay. All right. Yeah, you yeah, want, we get it. You we want, get it. He's going to get in. No, 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 no. Of course. Anyone. No, of course he's going to get in. Want to why? Because he also was an amazing player. Like, regardless. He's an amazing player, and he gets his ass. But no, no, but steroids isn't the issue, Tom. That's not the issue. But he's the issue because there are some people. Clemens didn't get in. And vote for him, too. Yeah, so but I mean, that's... Ridiculous. I, I mean, honestly, like, I, ugh, it's like, yeah, I think I think A-Rod, Bonds, Clemens should get in. Anyone who, do, like, don't get, give me a break. Everyone was doing speed and uppers and down. Like everyone was doing everything in the seventies, eighties. Like, I don't understand it. Like drugs in sports is kind of, it's just like hand in hand. And also what, what about like, uh, like, Oh, what do you take when you, you break an arm? Oh, just give them, give them a shot and put them back out there. It just kind of like, what's the difference with that? I don't understand. You don't mind manipulating their body in a certain medical. way. Medical. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's like medically approved. Yeah, it's, it's supervised by someone who's trying to make sure who's paid <laughs> to make sure you're out there and doesn't give a crap about your well being. That much. Josh Gordon. We'll just leave it at that. Josh Gordon. Yeah. Um, the last thing I want to mention regarding baseball is there was a very rare trade this week between the Yankees and the Red Sox. And it was actually a move that I really like. The Red Sox traded with the Yankees to get Adam Ottavino, a reliever that's in the Re- Yankees bullpen, who's been who's had a very good career. He had a down year last year, but I was flabbergasted by it because the Yankees are in uh, cap jail, so they had to free up some money to uh, to, to, to do something. And the Red Sox trade Red Sox and Yankees traded the first time since uh, Stephen Drew and Kelly Johnson. That was way back in 2014. But it's only the now this is only the third deal that they've done together since 1998. So shocking, shocking, shocking. Who who the Red Sox give? I, Adam Ottavino. No, I know the Red Sox got no. Who did the Red Sox give up? Nothing. It was Nothing. a salary dump for the Yankees. Oh wow. So yeah, good that is kind of crazy. Bullpen. So that's shocking, and he will now become um, one of the rare players who wears the number zero. For 2021, and it was it'll be the first time since Brandon Phillips back in 2018. Brandon so, Phillips, huh? Mm. Yep, the historic Brandon Phillips from that Labor Day game <laughs> in 2018. The lead he had a Red great Sox Red Sox career. career. He did. He did. He got his. <laughs> he home did for run. a little bit. He actually kind of did. Best home run that there ever that there's been in quite some time. Well, I mean, we we did everything today that we could possibly mm. throw at you. So. Um, we were left speechless now on what else we can say. So we will just have to see you again next time to get ready for the Super Bowl here on Face the Facts. So uh, for Phil Hill, Tom Smith, and me, we will see you next time here for another episode. See you later. Stay warm. Stay warm.